kind to her, but she cannot bear this anymore. Now, Dr. Daniel Copperfit. Why is the doctor carrying a hunting rifle in his bag with live ammunition? Does he plan to kill someone else? And Sarah. Sarah's diary. She is thinking of calling it quits with Sir Aaron. And yes, I'm reading your diary, Sarah. She is aware of Anna's wish to leave. And we see there is a lot of distress about that. Now, she and Anna are close friends. She has also offered to help Lily and has even tried to get Edward and Lily to be in the same room. She mentions they are very shy and they need gentle prods. Could this mean that not one single person could be to blame? What do you think? Oh, uh, wait. Uh, wait, huh? Uh, I think I'll, I'll deal with this. Uh, why don't you keep our friends safe and, uh, you know, get them wrote in on who you think did this. The murder, not this. So here you go. You can place your votes on who murdered Sir Aaron Hume. This is what people think. Oh, interesting. 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 Okay. So now Sir Aaron has come back to haunt us. Uh... We get it, Sir Aaron. You're a big scary ghost. But will he tell us who murdered him? No. Talking mm. ghosts only exist in these um movie finnies. This isn't Harry Potter. This is a murder. A murder. And as to why Sir Aaron has decided to join us, I think it's because he wants to see his murderer put to justice. Mm. Is that right, Sir Aaron? Mm. Uh, anyway, Sir Aaron's return sends his own maid, Anna, into a fainting spell. I mean, you can't have a murder mystery without a woman fainting, apparently. But Edward is fascinated, while everyone else is understandably just staring, utterly confused that there's a ghost. Suddenly, Dr. Copperfit reaches for his bag and pulls out his rifle. Again, why does the man have a hunting rifle? He claims for his own safety. What? Did he know we could be in danger? And also, is he silly enough to think he can shoot a ghost? Or is it just me thinking this, right? <coughs> but the only creature who doesn't seem at all concerned is Uggy. Perhaps dogs can't see the ghost. Sarah rushes to Anna and helps her recover. Now, they hold hands for the rest of their time here. Humphrey is now more than nervous that Dr. Copperfit has a rather large gun. Now, Humphrey himself is a hunter. He knows how dangerous these things are. And he tells Dr. Copperfit to put it down. But the doctor shakes his head. Now, Sarah tells him to put it down. The ghost is his friend, after all. If Sir Aaron would hurt anyone, it won't be his best friend, surely? But the doctor shakes his head. You see, whilst he claims to have been good friends with Sir Aaron, there's something that tore apart their friendship. That something is someone. And that someone, Dr. Copperfit claims, is Sarah herself. For Copperfit fell in love at first sight, and Sir Aaron knew this teased him about it. And what did his best friend do? Why, he got to Sarah first. And behind the scenes, he tormented the poor doctor on his own poor health and loveless life. Should have been quicker, old chap. Now the doctor turns to Edward and Lily, and he tells them both not to wait, or the worst could happen. Both of them just look at their feet, blushing despite the seriousness of the situation. Anna quietly takes the gun from the doctor while the ghost smirks. Anna is suddenly questioned about her letter. When did, why, when did she want to leave and why? Now Anna tells everyone with blunt honesty that Sir Aaron called her many names, insulted her country of Ireland, which you don't do to Irish people, and her family. But the last straw was when he wouldn't let her take time off to visit her dying mother or even go to the funeral. She does not mourn Sir Aaron, 
and of no shame. Anna then turns to Humphrey. She says, Humphrey claims to have known Sir Aaron when he was a child. The doctor then says that both he and Sir Aaron bullied Humphrey in school. Why? Well, with a surname like Bopton up, he was kind of asking for it. Now, poor Humphrey, for once, he doesn't look so smug anymore. In fact, he looks kind of sad. But then he glares at both Edward and Lily. He asks Lily why she was late, and why both of them are even at the party. And a wine party when neither of them drink. Why was Lily late? Was she doing some last minute preparations? After all, if Sarah was the killer, wouldn't she have waited until Sir Aaron had proposed? And with Sir Aaron dead, Lily is the sole heir. Lily is the one who is going to get Sir Aaron's money. This is where everything goes a wee bit crazy. Lily turns bright red and she runs out of the room. Edward is in hot pursuit as is Copperfield and the fat politician wannabe Humphrey. But of course Humphrey slips on the first flight of stairs. Anna rushes to his aid and with Sarah they help him up. Uggy barks in panic, abandoned at the table. Dr. Copperfield in the corridors loses his way. Lily was too fast and Edward could well be with her or elsewhere. We don't know. Sarah hears him calling out to Lily. She tells Anna to stay with Humphrey. She is going to go and get help. The ghost appears to smile even more. Hopperfit raises his gun as the candles in the corridor start to fade, then go dark. Those in the big house hear a final shout, and then a shot. Everyone, including Uggy, rushes to the scene. Dr. Daniel Copperfit lies dead in a pool of blood. His rifle is not in his hands, but on the ground, several feet away. Someone pulled it out of his hands in the darkness and shot him through the heart. And the ghost openly chuckles. Well, great. As myself and my maid put the remaining suspects in a locked room for now, Go away and see if your suspect has changed. I highly doubt it was the doctor. He's dead. I did the check-in, so no one else would. Thank you, but Moira. I believe I figured it all out. Everyone, you can take your guess, but just remember, this is your final vote before the reveal. Good luck. <laughs> Okay, Inspector, we've got votes, we've got results. Uh, give me a second. You know, I've just arranged to clear both bodies away. One, because no one wants to see them, and two, they smell. Especially the doctor. No one tells you that in order college or an undercover school. The smell from both men is awful. Still, one less hunter and misogynist is good. Not saying what happened to Copperfield was deserved. I'd say he suffered more fear than any pain from his death. And now I shall stop talking. <laughs> now we have the remaining suspects. Edward, Humphrey, Lily, Anna and Sarah. Two men, three women. The writer, the drunk, the quiet one, the maid, and the lover. Oh, and the dog. And Sir Aaron is still haunting us. Oh. Now, oh. 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 <laughs> now, listen, my friends, I have my suspicions, and I think I may have already worked it out. But like any good murder mystery, I have to go through everyone before finally getting the culprit. Now, I will address each suspect, yes, even Dr. Copperfit and tell everyone what I know. I think it's time for us to end this. Agreed? Let's all nod. Agreed? Let's end this. Let's end this silly night so I can go out and get my paycheck. Now, let us start with the second victim of the night, Dr. Daniel Copperfit. Copperfit was a man filled with jealousy and self-loathing. He saw Sir Aaron as a successful man who in turn <laughs> belittled his one good friend and even stole the woman he loved. Copperfit lashed out at other women. He drank too much and delved into his love of fox hunting. 
he was a killer. And most of all, he was a sad and lonely man, and no one would mourn him. Sorry, Doctor. Except Sarah Needy. See, Sarah had suspicions that Daniel loved her. But she went with Sir Aaron because, well, I'll get to that. But Sir Aaron quickly showed he was not a good boyfriend. He even struck Sarah. But he, but he, and he always threatened to. And like Anna, he called Sarah many names. Did she know the very wine she ordered would be used against him? Did you, Sarah? Humphrey, the man who loved the British Empire, his wine and the marmont of his knighthood, was very surprised to be invited to the party. He only really showed up to get drunk. You know, childhood history can run up bad memories, we all know that. And as he grew older, Humphrey had little time to think of Sir Aaron, except his wealth and fame. Wealth and fame he thought he should have. He did not even know Sir Aaron had family. And did he think killing him would get him at least some of what Sir Aaron owned? And maybe a page in history? A wine party with dancing and drinking, no matter his interest in dark things, is certainly no place for Edward. Maybe he was just here to meet Lily, his childhood sweetheart. Lily was poorer than Edward. Now, Sir Aaron never took care of her and her family, and not even when his brother and her mother died. She had no parents at 19 years of age. Only Sir Aaron was family. Sarah was the one who encouraged the shy couple to meet and talk. Now, this Halloween party was merely one of oof, many she had arranged for them to be close. And Sarah, despite not even being engaged, showed more love to Lily than Sir Aaron. Sarah knew that Lily was the sole heir, and she, in her compassion, firmly believed Lily needed to owe. Now, Sarah did have one other friend, and that was Anna. Anna was the reason Sarah decided to go with Sir Aaron and not Dr. Copperfit. Anna was struggling at the time. Now, she went to bed every night in tears. There's Sir Aaron's voice in her ears. That's how badly he mistreated her. But when Sarah came, things changed. You see, Sarah and Anna didn't just become friends. At the same party Sir Aaron and Dr. Copperfit first saw Sarah, poor Anna was in the background with her shoulders high and her bright eyes looking down. Sarah took one look at those eyes and she fell in love. Imagine the scandal if such a thing could come out public. But Anna's ill treatment from Sir Aaron got the best of her time and she wanted to leave. And that was the final straw. Sarah had watched Daniel's heartbreak. She had seen the ill treatment of both Lily and Anna, and she loved Lily like her daughter. And Anna was indeed her one true love. And Anna was going away because of one man, Sir Aaron. And so she poisoned him. She left a drink labeled just for Sir Aaron in the kitchen for the unaware Anna to pour and serve. Now, why did Sarah kill Dr. Copperfit? Simple fact, Dr. Copperfit was not meant to die. But Sarah had not foreseen him running after Lily. She knew Edward would not harm the girl, but she sensed that the doctor would have no qualms in killing an innocent girl. It was just luck, it was a perfect shot. So I declare that Sarah Needy was Sir Aaron's murderer. The method was cold, but the reasons could help her fate. Sarah didn't just kill Sir Aaron out of rage or spite. She killed him so Lily could be financially supportive, help Edward out as well, but most of all, she wanted the man who harmed her love to be away so Anna would stay with her. And with Sir Aaron out of the way, any affection they could have had would have blossomed, even under the frowns of so many especially in our society. So, what should be done with Sarah Needy? I'm an inspector, I'm not a judge. If you want to throw her in jail, make her dance on her own, or even let her go, you're cool. I'm going to see myself out. Handing around the rich can be dangerous. <sighs> well, that was a gory night. Two murders. I'll tell you this, Moira. Edward and Lily do go on to get married. 
Aggie finds love in some nearest park and his dad to four puppies, probably more. Humphrey never gets his knighthood because <laughs> Anna waits for her love to return to her and Sir Aaron and Dr. Copperfit are very much dead. Good night to you, jury. And thank you for being with us. And I trust your judgment. I'm off for my paycheck. Bring me down, baby. 